Hey, let's add some ruffles to this dress. It's the dress we made last time. It's going to be a really weird dress over this video and the next couple of videos um, that we are going to make creatively. So let's jump in here. And um, I am just going to draw a rectangle and we are going to add some straight up ruffles to the bottom of this. I'm just going to draw one a little bit too long um, and we are going to right click on it and choose, sorry, not with the rectangle tool, with the uh, pattern transformation tool or the black selection tool. Um, we're going to right click on it and choose symmetric pattern with sewing and then um, we're going to just sew this to the bottom of the dress um, like so. Grab the segment tool, um, make sure that the crosses are on the same side, and there we go. And we'll sew the centers of these together. Um, in CLO, you can sew any size seam to any other size seam, so I just hit simulate so that it'll sew it. And it does kind of give it like some momentum when it's sewing, especially when it comes out from so far. Um, but it should even out um, as the shirt simulates. Um, and there we have some nice ruffles. Um, and they're only in the front, but it would be pretty straightforward to add them to the back. Okay, so now I'm going to stop the simulation and instead of ruffles, we are going to add pleats and we're just going to add the um, simplest version of pleats. Um, so I've made this a lot smaller so it's only just the size of the bottom of the dress um, and we are going to come up to the pleats tool and that's up here. Um, and there's a pleat tool and a um, pleats fold tool and a pleat sewing tool, but we're just going to talk about the pleat tool right now and we can maybe talk about those other ones another time. Um, and we are going to click on click on the segment that you want the pleats to intersect with, not the one that you want them to be parallel with. And we draw across to the other side and then we click the um, side to add pleats. Um, so we click on the left and it's just going to add fabric um, and we can change the thickness of the pleats um, and the number of pleats Oh, okay, there they are. Um, they weren't showing up, so I was thrown for a second. But um, eventually we should be able to add enough that the, we would like catch up to the end. Um, but let's see if we just make the pleats a little bit bigger, what that changes. Yeah, so that's, that's looking good. Um, and we're just going to try to add... Um, as many as possible, basically. Um, so it's kind of maxing me out at a certain amount. It snapped back, kind of indicating that it's not possible, but 25 is, so we'll go there. We'll hit okay. Um, so now I'm going to um, reset the 3D arrangement in here. And um, interesting about these seam lines, how they're all unique colors, um, because um, it's kind of sewing the pleats, it's kind of folding them over and sewing the pleats each individually. Um, so those are each like a unique seam line. Um, I'm just going to move these out of the way of each other um, so that they aren't touching um, just so that they don't 
kind of interrupt each other as they're getting sewn on. And let's, uh, let's hit simulate and watch this fold. Boom. So these look great um, for pleats or for ruffles to look really good. Um, sorry, I, I just hit the mic. Um, for pleats or ruffles to look really good, we want to change the particle distance down to five, but you only want to do this after it's kind of been draped into shape because it can make your simulation run really slowly. So um, we're going to select the piece and come to the properties editor and we'll select both of them at the same time. Select the pieces, we'll stop the simulation, select the pieces and um, come to the property editor. And we'll change the simulation or the particle distance down to something under 10. Um, so let's try, let's just try 10. Uh, and the particle distance means how like far apart um, the polygons that make up this shape are. Right, um, so now they're just 10 millimeters apart in scale um, instead of 20 millimeters, um, which just allows things to like fold and rest and sit more smoothly and beautifully. Um, this garment is, this fabric is made out of a knit, which is interesting. It still did fold really well, um, but we can change the type of fabric um, to a woven and that you know might help a little bit more um, and to do that we can just change the settings on the default fabric um, if we click up here we can go down to the we um, I've minimized information and material and I'm just looking at the physical property heading and we can change it from default to um, something like cotton poplin or something, um, which should just remove a little bit of the stretch of this material. Um, and it's subtle, but it is going back up and looking a little bit smoother, a little bit less stretched out. Um, so I hope all of that was helpful. Um, Remember to check your particle distance, especially with like gathered things, ruffly things. Um, we need to make sure that um, they are like being rendered properly, um, but you don't want to lower the simulation distance, um, the, dis the particle distance too early or else the simulation will start running really, really slow. So keep that in mind. You want to change that after, um, maybe just for the screenshots and then change it back, um, at least on my computer. And we only did these for the front, but that's fine. We can fix the back some other time. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about just these really quick tips for ruffles and pleats. Bye.